Taylor Swift, the icon for many Western girls, women, and even some guys. But what if I told you she isn't as innocent as she may seem? In this video, I'll touch on a few points that should make you question whether you should still idolize her and keep listening to her music or not. So without further ado, let's go. I'm just playing. Shoutouts to Fresh and Fit though. So I'm old enough to remember when she came to the scene. She came out of nowhere and suddenly her song Love Story is trending everywhere. And everyone's like, oh my god, she's so beautiful, she's like an angel. Whoa. And that's how she gained everyone's trust. The world is fair and square. Everyone's making honest money. Nobody has malicious intentions. And singers are just singing to make people happy, right? Wrong. So let's start with this clip. Now you might think, it's whatever, it's just a song. It's not whatever. You gotta understand that this person sings to millions of young impressionable girls that take everything what their idol does to heart. Now the problem is if she starts spreading unhealthy messaging, which she of course does. Once she got a big enough of a following, she started slowly but surely having subliminal messages in her songs to steer the minds of her following in a certain direction. Now she's had so many boyfriends and broke up with every single one of them. Now, the problem is always the guys, right? Breaking up so many times is totally normal, right? No, it's not. It's been normalized, and anything that has to be normalized isn't normal in the first place. And wasn't normal for a reason. Now, this unserious perception of relationships had a detrimental impact on the Western society that we know of today. Now, I don't really want to delve into feminism and its agenda to disrupt the nuclear family unit, but just know that Taylor Swift played a role in that movement's agenda. Oh no! Oh no! No no! No no no! <laughs> okay now, let's take a step back. I don't understand all this hype around celebrities and actors, singers and so on. I used to do the same thing, but then I found out that these people are basically puppets. They are under slave contract, basically, and they don't really have a free will. They have to do everything what their handlers tell them to do. They just sold out. Yummy. Now she advocates for you to live ecologically. Meanwhile, she flies with her jet like there's no tomorrow. Just look at her carbon footprint just from her flying by the jet. Kinda hypocritical, isn't it? Now let's get back to the darker side, and that is the music industry itself. Have you ever watched a music video and thought to yourself, man this is weird, this doesn't even fit the song, why is this so weird? And it's on purpose. It's been going on since either early 2000s or late 2000s, but it's been going on for a long time. You might have the argument that, oh, it's just art. No, it's not. Why does it have to be so demonic and dark and satanic? Does it need to be like that to be art? I wouldn't say so. Now that was about the music videos, but let's talk about concerts, which get much weirder. In her most recent concert, Taylor Swift is performing witchcraft. And I know this is going to raise some controversy in the comments, but this just doesn't look right to me. Yeah, definitely not creepy, right? And it's not just Taylor going nuts. 
It's literally the whole music industry being this way. The crazy conspiracy theory that with every massive stadium tour going on right now, that there are a lot of demonic messages being unwillfully taken in by the huge crowds every night. At Beyonce's Stadium Renaissance World Tour, there's a scary interlude that takes fans by surprise that begins with a portal hypnosis, as if to control you and draw you in. Then it gets scary when messages like, whoever controls the media controls the mind pop up on the screen. Then it's terrifying when mind control messages pop up on the screen in between placements of Beyonce's face and a picture of a human in a submissive worshipy pose. Fans were saying they were getting so uncomfortable during this part they were looking away. Second, the known suspected Satanist The Weeknd was so shameless and blatantly for no reason flashed Satan's name on the Jumbotron at his stadium concert. He's not even hiding his affinity for Satan at this point. It actually flashed twice. I'm making sure that you saw it. Fans and viewers often said they felt very uncomfortable at his whole run of his stadium tour because the thing just felt like one big demonic ritual that they were forced to be a part of. There's literally a demonic chant screened by all the fans at the Taylor Swift Eras tour during her song Willow and they all yell, summon the demons. Summon the demons, fans! They do this as Taylor is literally dressed as a witch with her whole coven and there's a ceremonial huge fire in the middle of the forest. Does that remind you of anything? Are yeah, I don't think this is a good thing for your daughter to be cheering for. The ritual thing is pretty fascinating. They do a conjuring ceremony. The deepest conspiracy is that the energy, if you believe in energy, which I do, the people are helping fulfill it. I've seen her at the parties, bro. You've seen Taylor, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, dude. Bro. Richie, you've seen Taylor Swift. I've seen Swift. Taylor Swift at the parties, bro. What was she doing? She was dancing with the devil. She She's just like dancing all crazy all over everybody. Is she on drugs? She's definitely cocaine, man. Can you tell us anything that you've seen her do that made you believe that she is part of a satanic cult? That she blood. is, in fact, she did what now? She drank blood, bro. This is disturbing, She Richie. was there drinking blood, bro. She goes, I love drinking blood. And she's in this, like, that's disturbing. She's pretty much like in hell. Like, there's all this fire and stuff. She's all seductive in this seductive, like, you know, dress. Do you think she's attractive, Richie? <laughs> Dude, she's satanic, bro. But that's not, that's, you didn't answer she's the question. She's satanic, bro. D answer the question, Richie. I don't Richie. see her like that, bro. You don't. I don't live for that, dude. So in this video, you can clearly see she's throwing up the devil horns over here, right? Dave, what are you doing? I'm giving a blessing to the to the audience. I don't think they appreciate it. They were throwing it back. <laughs> well, they thought it was a curse. Uh, Would you like me to show them how the sign of the curse works? The sign it's of the curse? Completely different. How does it go? No, not at you, not at you people out there in the audience, but this is the difference. Aim it toward Red China, would you? <laughs> this is the sign of the horns. A curse sign, the two fingers extended. This way, spread apart for sort of shotgun blast, you know. I always figured if I ever met the, de together. the devil, it'd have dirty fingernails. Go on. The other ones, too. Yeah, what are the other ones? The other ones, one of them's the pox sign, that's three fingers extended. A pox on you? A pox on you during the Middle Ages. This gotcha, bitch! So now you might be asking, who is this guy? That's Anton LaVey, the founder of Church of Satan, and basically the modern Satanism itself. Now he had a daughter named Zena, who pretty much looks like Taylor. Zena Shrek, former high priestess of the Church of Satan. The daughter of Church of Satan founder Anton LaVey. Taylor Swift actively resembles her and represents her. Zena used snakes as her symbol.